Good morning, ladies and gents. I'm back with another Kong's Blade video this time around. We're going to be looking at the cohorts, how they work, and what you need to know about them. Before we get into the video, though, hit that subscribe button if you want to be kept up to date with the latest and greatest of Conqueror's Blade. So the cohorts are a bit of a weird thing in Conqueror's Blade, and they are one of those things which really shouldn't be but they are looked down upon by most players in the game the cohorts are a kind of unorganized assortment of people that do not fancy or do not have the time or the desire to join actual traditional player houses the cohorts are the ai house of the game however the ai house of the game has all of these players within them i am currently in the cohorts and I had an amazing territory war yesterday, which I recorded loads of footage on, and you will be able to see some of those fights in action and near the uh, near the later stages of this video. So, firstly, the cohorts are broken down into each of the separate regions. So, right now. There are four separate regions, you can join one of four cohorts. When they uh, actually open up the other areas and everything, more cohorts become available. Now you must be picking the cohort that you want to play in, in the region you want to be able to play in. So, for example, right now I am in the Ungjavera uh, cohort and I can only go to battles in this region. If I wanted to go down and play in Anadulu, I would have to join the Anadulu kind of cohorts. So that is kind of make sure you are choosing the right cohort in the region you want to play in. You can only join that cohort whatever region you're in. So you have to travel to the region first before you can actually join the cohort that you want to get into. Second thing to really be aware of is cohorts. They have a seven day cooldown on them. So if you join the cohort on the Monday, you cannot leave the cohort until the next Monday. So make sure if you are joining the cohort, uh, you're thinking, oh, I'll just do like a territory war while I'm waiting for whatever house or whatever. It doesn't work like that. You have to stay in this cohort for at least seven days before you can leave it and then go off and join another house. Some cohorts are, at this point of the season, possibly going to be full, although I didn't have any trouble at all this season actually getting into uh, the cohort for the main region, so that only says to me that actually the numbers are down a little bit in the cohorts. So you shouldn't have any trouble, but if you do, it will just come up flashing a message saying this cohort's full. Go try another one or come try it again later on. I think every week they actually kick players that haven't been on for a couple of weeks, so it's just constantly rotating around and just freeing up space in all of the cohorts. Now the cohort ranking system, this is the thing that not a lot of people know about and it is a bit of a weird kind of ranking system. So, and just as much the same as normal houses, you have house quests, these actually will give you rewards, but they will also give you a claim. A claim is how you rank up in this cohort house. It is, a little difficult of a system to try and get your head around to begin with but actually once you understand it and once you understand that actually what it means at certain ranks as well it is fairly easy system to actually kind of know and it is a pretty kind of balanced and fair system as well so the more you are putting in the more you are going to get out of it so if you are attending territory wars if you are actually doing the house quest your acclaim will go up and with the acclaim going up so will your rank now i'm not sure <clears throat> what part of the week these actually get sorted out um but you will have to get to a certain amount of acclaim to hit a certain rank and as you can see right from the get-go you will be straight in at Valer's uh, rank once your acclaim is 50. Getting 50 acclaim is very, very easy. It won't take you very long at all. Once you get to that rank, every single week then you are going to be getting a uh, bronze coin reward from the um, from the game. So you are getting something. Now, normal traditional house, uh, like the player houses, you have to actually be a named rank to be able to actually get anything. Yes, some houses do have house funds and all the rest of it, but some of them don't even open those and some of them don't even give titles out. So actually, you could be worse off in a player house by not getting any rewards whatsoever. And going up these ranks, then going up these ranks, like I said, the more acclaim that you actually accrue, then you are going to be moving up the ranks, moving up the ranks, moving up the ranks. I think the highest I've ever got to was up to around this kind of level, 
couple of seasons ago and I very very much enjoyed it. Now local seniority this is really the bit that really confuses people. Local seniority is based on your total acclaim. In each of the regions you will have a separate number of cohorts so right now I'm in the third cohort and I'm pretty sure there's either four or five cohorts in all regions so there are four to five hundred people in each region in the cohort. What this local seniority is, is it makes sure that only one person can actually fill this rank and it is based on your total acclaim. So if two people were above this 5,500, so one person had say 5,600 acclaim and one person had 5,800 acclaim, the 5,800 acclaim person or the 5,800 person would be the Lord Commander because you can only have one person in this role. As your acclaim is the highest, you are the most senior member in the house, which gives you this Lord Commander role. That second person then would drop down into General of the West and so on and so on and so on. So this goes to show that actually only in certain ranks can there be one person and that is the top four ranks there. Or the top three ranks, sorry. Top three ranks, there can only be one person of that rank. Two first legate, two deputy legate, and so on and so on and so forth. So it just goes to show that actually really stacking and hitting that acclaim farm quite hard is really important if you want to grow the ranks in the house and get up to these top levels. Another thing to be very aware of as well is in cohorts, they have the ability to defend capital cities when they first open in a campaign. However, you have to be at a certain rank to be able to do it. I cannot remember for the life of me what that rank is, but it is around this kind of level, so that 800 to 1000 acclaim it is around that kind of level. This prevents or tries to prevent people from kind of just jumping into the cohort, slot blocking and all the rest of it. Now, I know there's a lot of chat out in the community, especially at the moment, that there are certain houses doing the slot blocking and all the rest of it. To be honest, it is pretty easy to tell because if someone is slot blocking, so they're stopping an attack happen from, say, another house, you will only see one cohort person in that fight, and it is very, very sus, to say the least. Most people will use the teleport screen, which I'm just showing you in the video right now, where when you are on the world map for a territory war, there will be a little red icon on the right in the list of all the battles currently ongoing. What this little red icon is, is a teleport or the rapid response. So you literally, you could be sat wherever in the region, hit that red button and it will pull you straight to your unit screen and then it will put you in the queue for the battle. So if you are say sat in the capital and there is a village right on the outskirts of the region being attacked and you have the ability to defend it because it is an AI village, you can actually do that straight from the capital. You don't have to leave, you don't have to run about, whereas all the people in the player houses have to actually physically run there with their units, artillery and all the rest of it. It is a massive, massive bonus for the cohorts and it is really, really nice. Cohorts are all about loads of battles over and over and over again. And I'm gonna be showing you some of the battles that we had last night as well. Cohorts seem to excel massively and have always have done in village fights. They seem to be able to overwhelm a lot of houses and really, really fight tooth and nail for these village fiefs. So the open field kind of village fiefs, they seem to be very, very strong. And because people see, oh, it's just the cohorts, I think a lot of it is people really underestimate the cohorts. There are level 2,000, there are probably now level 3,000 players in the cohorts and a lot of them as well, not just the odd one. Everybody that I was going into battle last night had either purple or gold units and you don't even get that from some player houses. So it goes to show you just how high a level some of these people are in the cohorts. Little bit of strategy, little bit of kind of shot corner as best you can. There's no discord really or none that I know of at this point for the cohort. So it is all literally just done through the uh, kind of top down kind of overview. So you just kind of click and point and hope people follow it. And people seem to be last night when I was doing it and we 
won every single village fight that I went into. City fights, city and fort fights for cohorts seem to be their kind of downfall because there isn't a lot of organisation, there's not a lot of kind of strategy or anything like that. It seems to be just an absolute bomb rush sometimes with the best units that people can bring out, but it is always good fun. And once you obviously are knocked out of a battle, you just got to wait for two minutes and you're straight back into one anyway. And there are loads and loads of battles going on the whole time. You can see from the world map that literally we, as a cohort, own the majority of the main region, which is absolute madness. It goes to show you just how strong the cohorts are in this region and just how strong the people are in them. So if you are thinking about going into the cohorts, I hope I have kind of explained the cohorts as best as I can and I've kind of covered stuff that maybe you didn't really know about or didn't really understand. If there are any other questions about the cohorts, please do leave them down in the comments below for me. But if you are thinking about the cohorts, if you don't want any drama, you just want to go somewhere that's chill, somewhere nice, get shit loads of kind of territorial war fights and cohorts are maybe the place for you to go. Give it a go. I would say I would actually do recommend it to every single person in the game. If you have not yet tried the cohorts, try them at some point in the next couple of seasons because they are just a very good, fun, easy going place to be with loads and loads of fights wherever and whenever you want to do them as well. Thank you very much for watching folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope this kind of clears up the whole kind of what cohorts are about and what kind of works in them and everything. I am going to leave this video here. If this video has helped you, if you've enjoyed it, please hit that like button, hit that sub button, share this video around. And as always folks, I hope to catch you out on the battlefield.